everybody, it's Wednesday. I'm Matthew Laria, and you're watching our Faith for Life broadcast. Let's pray and release faith over today's broadcast, and then we're gonna get right into the Word. Father, we do thank you again today, Lord, for your Word. Lord, we love your Word. It's so precious to us, and we're asking you today for revelation of it, for grace and help to be doers of it, and to see the results of it in our lives. And we do thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, all this week on the broadcast, we've been doing a series of teachings entitled Renewing Your Mind. And we're learning how vitally important it is that after a person gets born again to get their minds renewed to the Word of God. Now, I want to go back over to Romans chapter 12 again, and let's look at verse 2, uh, which is our foundation text for the week. Romans chapter 12 verse 2 says this, Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Now, friend, it's vitally important that you understand that your enemy is trying to conform you to the world. 2 Corinthians 4, 4 tells us that he is the God of this world. And so the world thinks the way he thinks because he's the one who forms their thinking. And he's trying to conform believers to think like the world thinks. He will try to bombard us with the values and influences of this world, whether it's the media, our television shows, our movies, social media, politicians, whatever it is, he is trying to bombard us with the influences of this world until our thinking is conformed. He wants us to think the way he thinks. In fact, he will try to squeeze you into the world's mold. In Romans chapter 12, verse 2 in the Phillips translation, it says, don't let the world around you squeeze you into its own mold. And this is what the enemy wants to do. He wants to squeeze you in to the world's mold where you're thinking like they think and you're thinking the way he wants you to think. Now, why is he working so hard to do this? If he can get you to think wrong, if he can get you to think the way the world thinks, he can render you ineffective as a believer and he can bring death and destruction into your life. Remember Romans 8, 6 says to be carnally minded is death. And so this is why he's trying to conform you because he wants to render you ineffective as a believer and he wants to bring destruction into your life. Now this verse said, don't be conformed to the world. Let me read it to you again. And be not conformed to this world. And so God is commanding us, don't be conformed. Don't let it happen. In Romans 12, 2, in the complete Jewish Bible, it says this, don't let yourselves be conformed to the standards of the world. What does that mean? Don't let it happen. That means the enemy is trying to get it to happen, and you and I are supposed to keep it from happening. Now, friend, it's a mistake to think that the enemy is not trying to do this. He is trying to influence the way you think every day. And you don't need to pretend, well, I, oh, no, he's not really trying to do that. No, he's trying to do it every day. And if you and I are not watchful of what we listen to and what we think on and what we feed on, we can be conformed to the world. If we feed on the world's junk, if we feed on worldly movies, worldly television shows, the media and social media, if we're feeding on that stuff all the time, then we will be conformed to think like the world thinks. You and I, as believers, we can be conformed to the world if we do certain things. And this is why God's telling us, don't let this happen. Don't, don't be conformed to the world. Don't think like they think. And one of the ways you can keep it from happening is you need to be watchful of what you feed on. If you'll feed on the Word, you won't be conformed to this world, but the enemy is desperate to get you to conform and to think the way the world thinks. And here's the thing, and this is, 
So vitally important that you understand this. The enemy is deceptive and the enemy is subtle. And so when he comes to try to get you to think the way he wants you to think and think like the world thinks, he is going to be subtle and he's going to be deceptive in doing it. What do I mean by that? He's not going to come to you and say, hey, hi, I'm the devil and this is the wrong way to think, but I want you to think this way. That's not how he's coming. You know, in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 13, it says that Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Actually, let me read that whole verse to you in verse 13. It says, for such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into apostles of Christ. And don't marvel at this, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. What is that verse talking about? It's talking about uh, false apostles who knew they weren't apostles, but they're trying to sell themselves as being apostles for Christ. And the scripture said, don't, don't marvel at that because Satan does the same thing. What do I mean? He's going to present a thought to you that is his like it's God's thought. He's going to present his thoughts like they're God's thoughts because he knows if you think it's from God, then you'll definitely take it. But if you know it's from him, then you won't receive that thought. And so we, we need to be on guard about being conformed because when he tries to get us to think wrong, he's going to present it as right and as being from God. That's one thing he does. Another thing he does in getting us to think wrong and conform is he will give us scriptures and twist them and try to say, see, this scripture says this and try to get us to think wrong by, by misusing and twisting scriptures. He did with this with Jesus in Matthew chapter 4 when he told Jesus to um, turn the rocks into bread. Jesus said, it's written, man doesn't live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. And so then Satan came and said, well, throw yourself off the pinnacle of the temple. And Satan quoted a verse. He said, for it's written, God's given his angels charge over you. Now, what's he doing with that verse? He's twisting it, trying to get Jesus to see it wrong and think wrong. And so what does Satan do? He presents his thoughts as being from God. He will twist scriptures to try to get you to think wrong. And you know, in Proverbs 14, 12, it says this, there is a way that seems right unto man, but the end thereof is death. And so he'll present things to you that look right and seem right that are actually wrong. And so how are you and I going to keep from being deceived and taking what he brings to us and thinking wrong and being conformed. How are we going to keep from thinking wrong and being conformed? How are we going to stop this from happening? Well, there's two big things. You know, if, if he's so subtle and he's so deceptive, how do you and I keep from being duped by him and thinking wrong? Well, there's two big things. And the first one is this. You check everything you think and everything you believe with this word. You need to ask yourself about every way you think and every way you believe in your life. Where are the scriptures that support that way of thinking and that way of believing? Where are the scriptures? If I believe this is right, and if I think this is right, where are the scriptures that support the way I think and the way that I believe? And friend, I'm not, I'm not just telling you that so you'll go, yeah, I know, you know, check it with the Bible. No, you need to analyze every, everything you think and everything you believe. You need to actively do it all the time and say, well, I, I think that and I believe that, but where is that in the Bible? You know, I believe that um, uh, God wants me healed and, and it's his will to be healed. But where is that in the Bible? Or if somebody is watching that doesn't believe in healing, you, if you don't believe it's God's will to heal, you need to ask yourself, where are the scriptures that support that way of thinking and believing? And this is one way that you can be kept and you can be guarded from thinking wrong. If you bring every way of thinking and every way of believing you have up to and measure it in line with this word, 
It'll keep you safe and it'll help you to not think wrong. And so the first thing that we need to do to not be conformed is check every way that we think and, and see if it agrees with this Bible. And then the second thing we must do if we're not going to be duped, deceived, and conformed to think like the world thinks is we need to walk in humility. You know, in 1 Peter 5, verse 5, it said that God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. And in Psalm uh, 23, I believe it is, um, excuse me, let me find that verse. In Psalm 23, it talked about how God will, will teach the meek his way. I think that's Psalm 25, forgive me. Psalm 25 and verse 6, I believe it is, that he will teach the meek his way. And so if you and I will practice humility and walk in humility, the humble will get the grace and the help and the humble will be taught. You know, if you're sitting there thinking today, well, I'm pretty much right about everything I think and I'll never think like the world and I could never be duped and I could never be deceived. If that's how you think, you're going to be vulnerable to being duped because you're not on guard the way you need to be. And so if you walk in humility and practice humility and stay humble, humility will be your protection against deception. And so those are the two big things. Check it with the word and walk in humility, and that'll keep you from being conformed to this world. This is good news, isn't it? Now, as we're closing today's broadcast, friend, I want to remind you of these three things. Number one, the enemy is trying to conform you to the world because he is the God of this world. Number two, we are commanded to not be conformed to the world. We are commanded to not let that happen. And then number three, in endeavoring to conform you to the world, the enemy is subtle. And so we need to do two things. We need to check everything we think and believe with the scripture, and we need to walk in humility. And that'll be our protection against deception and against being duped and thinking like the world thinks. Let's pray. Father. Lord, we thank you today that you are helping us every day to think the way that you think. And Lord, we say yes to your command. We will not be conformed to this world with your grace and with your help. We will not let that happen. We're going to check everything we think and believe with, with your word. And we're going to walk in humility. And Father, we thank you that you're going to help us to not be duped and not be conformed to this world. We do thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Friend, thank you so much for watching today's broadcast. Now, don't forget to come back tomorrow for Thursday's edition of our Faith for Life broadcast. And we're going to continue this series entitled Renewing Your Mind. We'll see you then. Hey, everybody. Matthew Larry here. Hey, if this broadcast is a blessing to you, and if the Lord is using this broadcast to minister to you, we would love to hear your testimony. You know, we like to share with our partners how their support is helping us to minister the Word of God and take the message of faith to people all over the world. And your testimonies will help us do just that. And so if you've been watching the broadcast and if you've been enjoying the broadcast, if the Lord has been ministering to you through the broadcast, we would love to hear your testimony. So please just go to mam.tv and send in a testimony to us of how the Faith for Life broadcast is blessing your life. Friend, it doesn't have to be long. We just want to hear from you. So thanks in advance for your testimonies, and we'll see you soon.